everybody it's niche welcome back to another episode of laughing and crying a podcast about love marriage and everything in between thank you for listening and as a reminder please rate the podcast please go and review the podcast i listen to these things i read them if you don't think the podcast deserves five stars keep it to yourself just click it off yeah fun day today i have two guests on the podcast Tasha, Dre, say hello to the people. Hey, hey y'all, people. I'm here. Yes, we are here together, all three. Tasha, Dre, we here. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> they are a fool. Anyway, we have a good show today. We are going to do One Gotta Go. I know you guys like One Gotta Go. Don't tell me you don't like One Gotta Go. You like it. We're going to do One Gotta Go, Disney movie, Pixar movie, you know, combo edition And we're also going to have a conversation later about our parents' marriage, how it affects our relationships currently, and just kind of chit-chatting about our family origin because that's a thing and sometimes it messes us up in life. I'm just saying. Um, So we're going to chit-chat about that. It's going to be great, you know, but first, hi, low buffalo. Let's do it. Hi, low buffalo. You're high of your day, you're low of your day, and then what's something that surprised you? My high was working from home. Yeah. aren't you lucky that you get to work from home because i don't get to work from home to say get to work from home very sparingly so whatever yes yeah. um low that i ran out of cream cheese and she told me i couldn't use strawberry cream cheese <laughs> she tried to use strawberry cream cheese in her spaghetti it wasn't spaghetti it don't was tell pasta. people that it was don't, tell, don't tell people that <laughs> <laughs> it may were a little sweet and savory. All right. No. Mm-hmm. I would have gave it a shot. <laughs> no. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something that surprised me today. Um, I'm trying to make a new recipe. <laughs> That's it. I ain't got no. I don't know. Nothing surprised you today? Um, Dre, wow. hello, Buffalo. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So, my high today. I just resolved a lot of issues at work. My low today is I am so sleepy today. Uh, I almost took a nap on my lunch break today, which is crazy. <laughs> I have never, I have never, yeah. And my buffalo for today, um, I got a head on some things at my job, but uh also friday i know we're gonna have to bang it out this week um let's see my high me i wasn't even a part of any of your three my high was that today was kind of chill sometimes my days expect a lot of me but today was kind of chill my low was i'll echo Dre. i'm tired you know still got this energy for this podcast but tired um and then my buffalo is that I'm going on a trip and it just hit me today that I'm going on a trip and I haven't packed. So surprise, Nisha pack. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, Alrighty, surprise, then. you procrastinated. <laughs> Procrastination, procrastination. We want our rights. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get into this one. I gotta go. Um, I'm excited. All right. One Gotta Go, if you're not familiar with the game, it's in the name. Uh, When you eliminate one of these choices, everything that goes along with it is eliminated as well. So we're doing Disney movies. So all the nostalgia, um, the characters, the songs, they all gotta go. We mix it up a little bit because we're doing family origin. I try to do some movies that have some strong family lines in it. You know, so we'll see. Okay, you guys ready? The movies are... Lion King, Mulan, Inside Out, The Incredibles. Although it is not my favorite movie, don't crucify me for this, you guys. The Lion King will stay. Not the live action one, the original animated one. You don't want Beyonce as Nala? Huh? You don't want Beyonce as Nala? Simba. I don't. (laughs) All right, Tasha, which one has to stay for you? Mulan. That was Why? Because Mulan is like the best movie ever. I'm going to make a man out of you. Come on. 
I'll make a man. Mushu, I'll come on. Yeah, yeah Mushu. I'll give you Mushu. Come I'll on. give you Mushu. Eddie Murphy. Okay. I mean, a late a girl goes in to the army for her dad, uh, risk her own life so that her dad can be fine. Yeah, that's the got, plot. Then, wow, <laughs> wow, wow! I wish the people could see my face right now. <laughs> <laughs> But and then the songs. All right, I say hands down, Inside Out has to stay first. It's the first movie as an adult that I watched that I'm like, I have to watch this again and again. Anger, sadness, joy, they're all a part of life. Yeah, that has to say. Inside out is good. We'll keep it's, inside out. Keep inside yeah. out. Well, okay, so we all agree. Good. Inside out face. <laughs> The Incredibles is good though, so I don't know if I yeah, can. I'm torn now. The I only ones I have left is Mulan and The Incredible. <laughs> and I, Lion King is good, but I'm like, I don't know. The Incredibles make you laugh. Lion King gets you on all kinds. Of I know Lion King is traumatizing. <laughs> this is what I'm talking what about. What made you laugh as well? Timon when? And Pumba? Oh, I guess. So. Are you aching yet? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was like a whole oh, like five bacon. seconds of the movie though. Are you aching for some bacon? That's what you got. See, when the they were dancing. Why I couldn't I couldn't eliminate Lion King though is because the Broadway play is amazing. That's true. So because if you eliminate Lion King, you eliminate it all. Yeah. Um you know what? In that defense, then the one that has to go, although I'm sad, yeah, will be moving. Mulan. No. Yeah. No. The live action. No. The live action. The live action is no. The Incredibles got three movies. So but they, they don't have no live action yet. If they had a live action, you probably would chop that up. It would be Marvel. Right. Marvel would do that. Okay, so who wants a three hour long Incredibles? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna come for Marvel like this. <laughs> yeah, that Mulan live action was yeah. I was it like, was what did good. you do? I felt like it did not go completely with the storyline, but the storyline it did present was good for what it was. But there was no Mushu. I don't understand. How you going to Mushu with? <laughs> exactly. You better figure it out. Right? You better go find a dragon. They find everything else. Like, bro. So they, found, they found the tax money I owed them. You got no cricket. You got no Mushu. <laughs> they found <a> what? <laughs> they, 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 they you can say no tax family. money. Yes. They found the tax money I owed them. They better go find a dragon for that movie. Shoot, they trained I'm everything else. I'm over so. it. I'm over it. So, consensus is Mulan has to go. That um, is not the consensus. <laughs> hey, it's two to three, Tasha. I'm sorry, friend. I don't care. <laughs> we don't need to get my back. to disagree. The people will have my back. Come on, okay, people. Okay, people. All right, people. People on podcast land, what do you guys think out of Mulan? Incredible. and the incredibles which one has to go it's not incredibles um so out of mulan which you one has to go <laughs> let them make their own decision <laughs> okay out of mulan and incredibles which one has to go let us know write in all that jazz i know you guys are gonna have my back because you always have my back okay okay that was a good one it tore us tore us apart a little bit i don't know how i appreciated that but you know there's some family trauma. You got the Lion King. He lost his daddy. His, his daddy was trampled by some hyenas. I mean. Wow. Water buffalo? What? 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 Wildebeest. 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 <laughs> First of all, one got to go, Misha. Anyway, um, his daddy was trampled by some wildebeest. And, you know, he had to grow up on his own. He was an orphan, Lord. No, he left his mama. There's a lot of family stuff going on there. <laughs> it's deep. And then you got Inside Out. She's talking back to her parents. Got all the people inside her head. She got schizophrenia. <laughs> no, ma'am. Don't be throwing out diagnosis like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got Mulan. Lord. Steady trying to please the parents. Listen, her mama don't want to speak up. Her best friend was a dog. There was some issues there. There was some issues up in that home. Her best friend was her grandmother. Her grandmother was crazy. She was great. She, we don't know what kind of mental illness is going on there. And then I'm tired of y'all coming. I'm tired of y'all coming from my my people of Mulan now. <laughs> Still got all the DVDs, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> y'all can both be silent. 
<laughs> anyway, like I said, Mulan's yeah. family was screwed up. The Incredibles, ugh. now they out here you got powers fighting together as a family, always arguing. Listen, some family origin stuff. And Daddy over here trying to live up to his, his old dreams, right? <laughs> trying to live up to his dreams, got his kids living vicariously through them, trying to make them putting them in tights. The little baby, he got to throw them in the mix. Jack Jack, it's just a lot. <laughs> wow. Like if you break these Disney movies down, man, wow. They'll never be having a daddy or a mama. I mean they do, but they just got some issues. Then they always die. Some of them. Or they that leave them find an emo. Mm, it's a lot. Died, yeah. <laughs> okay, here you go. Randomness. Have you guys heard the alternate theory of finding Nemo? Is actually that the mom and Nemo died. And the reason why the dad was trying to find Nemo because he was still mourning Nemo. And that's why he made up this whole journey of where he may be. So he was delusional? Pretty much. That that's was a so really good. sad story. And it's, I don't care for it's it. A deep, it's a deep theory. Know. And I said, oh my God. They had so many clues that made it like highly possible. Then where did Dory come from? That's part of his delusion. It's like he was dreaming. He just woke yeah, up. He was traumatized. I'm not doing this with you guys. All right, guys. So let's jump into this conversation because we talk about all these people got this family family drama in these movies. Let's talk about some of our family origin. We're gonna talk about our parents, our parents' marriage, or where we came from, and how that affects us in relationships because it does. If you ain't learned it yet, you'll learn it. It does. So let's go there. You guys out podcast land, you're safe because you ain't got no mic to talk into. But we're not. But we're going to do it for you. We're going to jump into this vulnerability for you. And um, you guys just be thinking, be you know, in thought, in deep thought. If you need a therapist, like I always say, get a therapist. Because it may be a little, you know, triggering for you. So let's start the conversation off by talking about how we grew up and what shaped you. What was your family like? What was your home like? Uh, no, I think my childhood was good. I grew up the late 80s early 90s so you know parents worked came home family dinner um you know help with your school work did chores and things so i think we had the typical like urban black family church all the time that's not typical what do you mean by church all the time not now the 90s i mean it was bible study on monday or tuesday it was a Wednesday service, Friday night service. Saturday was rehearsal all day. And Sunday, you was at church from sun up till Monday when you went to school. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my child was nothing like that. Oh. Come on, podcast people, get my back. You know, we're <laughs> doing schoolwork in the back of the church. <laughs> no, um, I grew up moving everywhere all the time. Because my mom went back to school a couple different times. And so we just like moved around a lot. And my parents were actually together. They're not together. They're together. They're not together. So it was just like very, I guess a word I could use is chaotic. But my, me and my siblings were close. I have a older sister and a younger brother. And uh, me and my sister were like best friends. Uh, my brother... He was the only boy, and I feel like he felt that. But um, we were we were close, me and my siblings, and we kind of were latchkey kids. My mom, she um, for the majority of the time, she was a single mom, and so she wasn't home. She was always at work, so we kind of we had to make do. You know, that was kind of um, how I grew up. I guess I got a little mixture of both of you guys. Um, I grew up me, my mom. And uh, my two siblings, I have five siblings, but only two, the three of us grew up together in one home and the rest were in another home. Um, so kind of like, kind of like Nisha, where uh, I took care of my sister. We took it, got it, got us to school, came home, locked the door, all the blinds closed, don't open the door for nobody. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't you answer that phone either. <laughs> right. <laughs> visit my my dad during the summers and sometimes on the ho- during holidays and yeah just kind of took care of ourselves but like dre we went to church on wednesday had had um stars program on wednesday and then 
on Saturday, I was with the junior <laughs> leaders. So, you know, I was there all day Saturday practicing for the plays and the set and the songs and the performances. And on <laughs> Sunday, we performed and we were there at church all day. Uh, sometimes we'd leave for lunch and then come back for afternoon service. So oh, no. we were there. <laughs> yeah. You don't need no dinner. We we serving baked chicken, mm-hmm. green beans, and a little bit of rice. Mm-hmm. But, but man, them chicken sandwiches at the church used to be banging though. So right. I almost a little mad at and grape soda. <laughs> so Jay, did your were your parents always together? Uh, yeah, as long as I can remember, I'm the last of three. So if they had issues four or five years prior to me being born, I don't know nothing about it. I I cannot confirm or deny these accusations. <laughs> yeah, uh, my parents pretty much been together all my life, through the good, the bad, the ugly. It got rocky sometimes. Okay, so I feel like we have a different dynamic here. Like your parents have been together. My parents were on and off, on and off till they quit. Uh, and then Tasha, your parents were never married. They were, I guess, uh, what's it called? Common mm-hmm. law. Oh, okay. Long- they miss, uh, from my understanding, they miss the the wedding appointment date or something, and then they just never went through with it. And I guess by the time that time rolled around, they separated. So, mm. okay. So, what was your um, relationship with your mother and father like? As a kid, it was great. You know, I was a kid. You know, I was the youngest. I got all so the you attention. Got baby. Yeah, I got all the attention and love. I had it hard too. <laughs> Last born, most love. That's just how it go. Sorry, yeah, Lord. Yeah. But um, you know, they use all their patience up on the other ones. Now I got all the free will. With my dad, I think I had a good relationship up until my father went blind as a child. So that was difficult to navigate. The hard part about having a father to go blind when you're a kid is when you have like resentment, although you understand like they couldn't help it. Um then you're also dealing with my father, you know, kind of, I guess, being angry as well, because he didn't really talk about his feelings. So I only assumed he was angry at losing his sight, but understanding feelings more. He probably was just like scared, afraid, kind of up in the air, taking it day by day. Um, and it just came out in the form of anger. So we, he got to a point where he could acknowledge his his disability, use it as a capability and um, find a way to live with it. We grew older and matured more. The uh, angle or trajectory of our relationship changed. Now I see my parents as like helpful friends and mentors and guiders. Like I like spending time with my parents. With my mom, it it started off good. I guess we had pockets of good, good moments, but overall it was just more so like, do as I say, follow the rules. Period. (laughs) Yeah, try not to get into trouble. And as long as you did that, it was fine. So that was the extent of our relationship. And with my dad, I didn't have a good relationship up until I went off to college. It was very, very distant, very rocky. Partly because of my parents, their own interactions with each other um, and anger and, and residual feelings due to their breakup of their own marriage and then um or relationship and then just also my dad's inability to set boundaries in his new relationship so yeah kind of took the uh, short end of the stick yeah I feel that I would say my relationship with my parents was I think that I always had an understanding that they loved me but it was rocky and I think that it was because they were dealing with ups and downs of their own relationship. But my mom, we're just two different people, man. Like I love her, but she had a lot of, I feel like she had a lot of anger, resentment, unresolved emotions. Like you said, Tasha, like sometimes you just got the short end of the stick of it and didn't know how to handle it, especially as a child. Um, My dad had a lot of anger, man, this thread of anger going through all of us. But my dad had a lot of anger and his was more like my mom's was more like came out in like passive aggressiveness and stuff like that, which made it hard for me to approach her a lot of times. My dad's came out in like aggression, like physical aggression and stuff like that. That made me scared a lot of the time. And so I I always look at my relationship with my parents as this paradox of I know they love me, but 
man, is it hard to approach them or share emotions? You know, now that I'm older, I've talked to them about some of these things. But, you know, if we're just talking about our relationship growing up, man, I felt like, honestly, I was the closest with my sister because we were kind of going through the same experience. And our parents were, for lack of better words, preoccupied. So, yeah. Yeah, I understand that. I think my my relationship with my siblings were what I leaned on to because of the shared experience. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. Like they already, they always saw a relationship being tight as like being, this like the super good thing. And I just wonder if they ever understood that some of the times it was like, because it felt like the only thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't think my mother recognized it, but I think it was great to have someone be like, can you believe what your mother did? And really to be like, Oh yeah, I understand. Yeah, that's tough. I never saw my parents argue, like yelling at each other. Like they they expressed like strong opinions. Yeah. But they never like blew up on each other or like slammed doors and things like that. Yeah. Um, but they had they had arguments and stuff where they may like go in the bedroom and have a talk. Yeah. But to us and like people, like they, you know, they didn't put their business out there like that. Like no one, no one knew anything. But I think Overall, there were probably things that needed to be said that probably didn't get said in Mm -hmm. life. But as far as like, I never saw my dad be unloving to my mom, but I never saw my mom disrespect my dad in front of us or strangers. So it was kind of like the old contemporaries style marriage of like, we'll handle it when we handle it. And if it just blows over, we just let it blow over. Out of curiosity, I understand you're saying you never saw anything blow up, but did you ever see anything be suppressed? Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. something that clearly my father was agitated or even my mom was clearly agitated. Um, it could be something simple of like uh, with my dad, it could have been you did something wrong with the with the finances and he would be like, ugh. But he knew now he just had to work an hour or two extra the next day and he could let it go because he was always going to provide. Did it ever, did the suppression ever build up? I think in the longevity of marriage, but by this time, like we were like adults, Mm. you know, out the house. And it's like, you know, you have this relationship with your parents where you guys get a little closer. You guys are able to talk to each other a little more. But I don't think they ever told each other these things, you know, it's like a. How do you think that affected the way you went on to deal with conflict since you didn't see any results? It's a good question. Uh, well, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the heck is happening right now. <laughs> first of all, I'm not going to cry on this podcast because there ain't nothing wrong with me. I think in a way, I guess depends on how you see it, negative or positive, but like I don't ever see any issue big enough to call it quits one because of religion and two, because like with my parents, like there were things that happened as kids, like, cause you're a kid, kids see everything. Even when you think they don't, they see and hear everything. Just seeing how my parents handled issues. I'm like, Hey, it all work out. And it ain't really worth everything you feel right now on both ends. Um, so do you feel like you had the conflict resolution skills when it came down to time to deal with conflict that you couldn't just say, hey, like, oh, it will resolve itself? Oh, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, like emotional responses, like I had a lot of those. But I think ultimately, when I come down with a clear mind, I understand like there's really no need to be that upset. It's something that can be fixed. And when you learn to accept the things that that you can change, accept them and then change. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Me being your wife, I do kind of see you become frustrated when a problem doesn't resolve itself on its own. And that kind of makes a lot of sense, because if you're you've only seen your parents get upset and the next thing you saw was they're fine again for your you know little baby mind to be like, oh, this is how a problem works. They get upset. They don't talk about it. It's gone. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a boxing yeah, match. It disappears. It's, it's like, like a magic. boxing match. Right. Avoid, like avoid, avoid, duck, dive, dip. 
<laughs> See, we good. We ain't even get hit. <laughs> See, I feel like I, I came from the other side of just not not see because I don't have two parent a two parent home, so I didn't see that conflict resolution either. And the way I saw my mom deal with conflict on the outside, looking in from with her friends and family and things like that, it was just like we get upset, we have this argument, we don't talk for weeks, then we don't resolve it, and we don't say anything, and we mm. get back, and everything is fine. That's the so, yeah. So it's just <laughs> like yeah. So I I too didn't have those conflict resolution skills. It really was like suppress, suppress, suppress. Everything blows up. Deal yeah. with it then. Then we move forward. <laughs> and I <laughs> came from a home where everything was said all the time. Nice, mean, unnecessary. <laughs> and so when I go through conflict, it's like if I don't say everything that's on my mind, nice, mean, unnecessary, then we didn't resolve it. Or at least I thought this back there because I think I've learned more skills now. But that's deep, mm. bruh. And another thing. <laughs> right? Because it would be me sitting there, like, I could have had popcorn, listening to my parents go back and forth about, like, and this is why that one time, <laughs> let me stop talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Mom, it wasn't me. Mom, it wasn't me. <laughs> like, they just unleashed they just unleashed there was no and if there was suppression i don't remember it it was intense and so i find myself very comfortable in conflict when people are suppressing or holding stuff and i'm like i know there's something wrong but it's not being said i feel like that's when my heart races Mm -hmm. but when i'm in the midst of it i like have this like calmness about me Mm -hmm. you see the minute the conflict come, my anxiety is like, <laughs> it's like I'm running a marathon. It's like, boom, boom. boom, boom. You're like, no, <laughs> suppress, suppress, suppress. <laughs> no, do you no. ever, do you guys ever remember like a moment when you were in conflict or in a relationship where you told yourself, I'm not gonna be like my parents, I'm not gonna be like my parents. And then you were like, after that conflict, you were like, dang, I was being just like my mom. Or I was being just like my dad. I, I never, I don't, I think it was up until maybe when I was like 24 did I realize like the way I was dealing with conflict was not correct, that it mm. wasn't helping me. Uh, me having a really big argument with one of my best friends where we were contemplating not being friends anymore. And mm. um, and I was just, and we both had talked about like how we were dealing with the conflict and made me kind of reflect back to say, hey, wh- where is this coming from? Why do I feel like I can't say how I'm feeling? And then to reflect back and say, oh yeah, I grew up in a house where you couldn't say how you were feeling. There was no talking about your emotions. Just yeah. dealt with it. Um, so I can understand that. Um, I think like with with me being a guy, uh, I like to mansplain pretty much everything. And I realize sometimes in conversations and conflicts, I'll find myself telling people how they can resolve it instead of like giving people like that freedom to express what they felt and how they want to resolve it. And me being able to stand, me being able to stand my own lane and not be telling people, if you would have done it like this, we could have avoided this and that because I always want to find the quickest solution. But respecting everybody is like, yo, sometimes the quickest way is not the way that gets the long-term results. It just resolves it in the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I just wonder because you're the only one on the podcast right now who hasn't had divorced parents. What did you think about other kids around that had divorced parents? How did you reconcile that in your brain? <laughs> I assume someone was dead. Oh no. Oh, that's <laughs> interesting. About, I'm like, oh, you know, like <laughs> I lost really my dad or I lost my mom, you know, or because they were by themselves, they just had like the other parent had to work so much, you know, because it was taboo. Like when I was growing up, <laughs> Divorce was like an odd thing. And if your parents were divorced, you had like the best snacks, the best clothes, because your parents were playing favorites. They were like, yo, you got yo, you got a friend with a divorced parent. You're like, we playing Nintendo all night and a oh, pizza. God. Yeah. That's yeah. Not true though. Like what mm-hmm. I, like that's how my dad did things like when we had visitation and stuff, like he would kind of do the bells and whistles, <laughs> you know. You guys want M and was- soda? that's so funny okay so let's flip it on his head how did you what did you think about kids tasha whose parents were like together like did you like think it was weird 
I didn't think it was weird. I just thought it was what it was. So I think one day we were in church and they were talking about divorce and like some kid and came out and pointed out that verse in the Bible about divorce. And, and then I was like, wait, is my mom going to hell because she's divorced? And so that was like mm. a point of conflict for me. It was just like, okay, what does this mean? And then realizing like, okay, like it, it's okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, but I didn't think anything weird about it. I was just like, oh, that's your family. And this is my family. And that's cool. So, cause I mean, at the end of the day, I did see my, my dad, my dad remarried. So I did see that when I yeah. was over at his house. I always thought it was weird when I had friends and I would ask them things and they would have to ask both of their parents. Mm. That was always like this weird thing to me where they're like, oh, I asked my mom, I have to ask my dad or my mom and my dad have to talk to each other. And I'm like, your mom and your dad talk to each other. (laughs) (laughs) It was just like, oh, it's this like weird thing that like my mind couldn't grasp around as like a kid of how a household with two parents worked because whatever my mom said went mm-hmm. so always weird for me it's the same in a two-parent household i think it's the same <laughs> yeah but it wasn't because my friends would be yeah. like oh i told my mom i gotta ask my dad but at the end of the day mom had mom made the decision yeah. but <laughs> for some respect on the daddy's name i hear come on america come on podcast let's change that uh daddy view what was your feeling like when you moved out of your home? Like, did was it like an exhale or was it like a sadness or? Ooh, it was an exhale for me. <laughs> I, was count, I was counting down the days. I even went to school over the summer for college just to get out. Just to Why'd you want to get out? Them. Because that's what I worked for. I was just like, once I turn 18, nobody going to be able to tell me nothing. I'm going to get out and take care of my own. I won't have to follow her rules. Like, it just, I was looking forward to that. Yeah. I'm having well, gone back since. <laughs> oh, no. Mm-hmm. Cutting that out. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> First of all. <laughs> it's true. I haven't gone back. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Jerry? Well, everybody know I'm the youngest. I'm the most loved. So well, they probably okay. took it That's hard when I left. When I, when I, I said, How did you feel? Um, now, leaving, we I actually left my parents' house on good terms. Like, there was no like bad blood or anything like forcing me to go. My dad was like, Yeah, you know, you got to learn how to like live on your own and stuff like that. And I was like, Okay. We set like a date, like a month or two from that day. And I did my homework research i moved out it where'd was, you go um, first apartment i had well i can't say the neighborhood because people might search me my first, first apartment, apartment i first apartment i had was uh it was three miles from my parents house <laughs> for me for me that was crucial <laughs> did you feel like I know. did you feel like oh my god i'm so far from home nah I knew I was three miles away, but I, but I was all like, I'm going to be coming over here every day. I got my own stuff to do. I got my pots and pans and all that. And I was going to have my <laughs> own now, house. Now, Dre, were you over there all the time? Right. <laughs> Getting larger yeah. and everything else. No, not. Oh, no. Not with my dad. No. <laughs> Trust me. You, you got no choice. There wasn't nothing. I felt like my sister got a good. My sister, uh, you know, she's the only girl. So she definitely got the like come over, have dinner all the time. Cause like look in the fridge, I was the youngest. So when I came over there, my brother had already raided the fridge. Then my dad was like, yeah, hey, you come over here. Funky knucklehead. Yeah. <laughs> my, then my sister is still in my dad pocket. So I just take what I could get when I could get it. Mm-hmm. Um, I was ready to go. You waiting at the door. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> no, I was ready to go <laughs> because I was a kid and still am a human who just doesn't really like a whole bunch of drama. And me and my mother's personalities clashing created a whole lot of drama. And so I think I was just ready to figure out who I was and to stop shutting down. I think I lived a lot of my childhood shut down. And I just wondered like, hey, if I didn't have to shut down, what would things be like? And so I was just ready to see that. I was ready to explore that. And I just have um, wonderlust and just a need for adventure. So 
that was another reason I just wanted to get out. You think your parents were sad when you? When oh you yeah, my mom. Them? So mm. sad. What about you? I think my sister was still home, so I think my mom was fine. I definitely know that there was like a shift in the environment. So, and then my brother like moved back home a few like a few months later. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it wasn't too bad for her. Shoot, my dad said, yeah, I get out and give me my house back. <laughs> Don't leave nothing in my storage, none of that. <laughs> he was ready for y'all to go. So. I mean, <laughs> how'd your mom feel? Was she sad? Look, you got to go. <laughs> my mom was a typical mom. I was like, you don't have to leave. But my dad come around the corner out of nowhere. Oh, you got to get up out of here. Uh-uh. <laughs> Do you think you'd be like that with your kids? Probably because, shoot, my my papa, he like that now. He tell you, you can come visit me for 29 days. But when you get to day 30, you officially live here. You got to pay bills. <laughs> so you can visit about three and a half weeks, just about. And then you got to go. <laughs> um, you're not currently married, but um, how did you learn about like marriage? Or what did you think about marriage based on what you went through? Um, learned about it through uh, Disney movies. Did you really? <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, so my godmother, who's my mom's sister, so my aunt, um, was like played a big role in my upbringing, and she was married. And so, okay. you know, I, growing up, I saw her wedding dress and saw the pictures, and you know, um, my uncle, my family's from Haiti, so my uncle had lived in Haiti for a good portion, and then moved down when I was like ten or eleven. And so I got to see the relationship once he came down and whatnot. So I think I really idolized their marriage and was like, oh, okay, when I grow up, I want to, I want to wear her wedding dress. I want to like have a wedding like her and have a marriage mm. like hers. I, I think I just, just loved my godmother so much that I just was like, whatever she does is right. I don't even know mm. if I really like looked at anything in particular, um, but then my grandparents were married too. So I saw that relationship and they had, <laughs> a love, hate, love, hate relationship. But it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> they loved each other. But like, I did see like how much my grandmother cared for my grandfather. And um, like as much as he got on her nerves, like she was there, like making sure he ate, making sure that he had all the things that he needed. He was making sure that all the bills were paid and that all her needs and all her dreams were being met. I think I saw two very like powerful marriages where I was like, okay, I, I want to be somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Is there anything that you feel like you got from, and either one of you guys can answer this, but is there anything that you feel like you got from watching people in your family when you were younger um, in their marriages that you're like, I don't want to take this with me into my relationships. I I don't want that. Yeah, of course. I didn't see my parents argue. And now that I'm like, I want to bring arguments into my marriage, but it's like, <laughs> like understanding that the absence of the presence of arguments is also the presence of like possible like resentment or just not getting things out there that may have given you more freedom or whatnot. I don't talk much about my feelings and things like that. I ain't see my dad do this on the regular. So as an adult now in my life, I understand that uh, as a man, like, it's just what you do and you'll get over it. But how would life would have been different if my parents spoke to each other more about what they feel and then actually knew how to respond in a way that both of them felt loved and respected? We would probably live a life with less fear toward each other and be like, I don't want to share because I don't want to give you ammunition. And you develop a mentality of like, I share with you because you don't come at me with ammunition. You come at me with like open arms and Mm. I have the freedom and the space and security now to say these things. So yeah, definitely. I would have, I wouldn't want to take the uh, absence of argument and resolution, I guess. Um, I know I did a podcast on this, but I just kind of want to double down on it. I don't want to bring contempt and I just don't really believe that when you're talking about the uh, relationship holistically, that there's one person that's the only problem. 
And if that person would have the A, B, C, D, or E, F, or G, then the whole relationship would have been fixed. The idea that there's nothing left to work on for yourself, I just don't want that to be in any of my relationships because I realize like you have more power and control than you think. Yeah. I think what I would say is going, uh, I would piggyback off of your um, statement of contentment. I don't, I think my grandmother didn't have a lot of room to speak her frustrations or her mm-hmm. needs. Um, or even, I think she had independence when she forced my grandfather to give her independence. So mm-hmm. I think those things I would not like to bring into a marriage. I would like to be able to communicate my needs and my feelings without it feeling like I have to do something drastic in order for it to be seen or heard is one thing. Um, and just, you know, I would like to do opposite of what my mom has done with our own relationships and actually communicate about our feelings. Yeah. Whether that makes everybody uncomfortable or hurts, um, just to solve the problem instead of waiting for things to explode. Is there anyone in your family that you wish you could ask a question to knowing that they will be completely honest with you? Um, I think I would ask my grandparents uh, but on both sides because I think it Ooh, would that's be, a good one. It would be helpful to get some insight on like my parents' childhood just to kind of figure out like where where did all of this stem from or thought processes and behaviors and all of that just to get a better understanding. I guess uh in one of those aspects, yeah, I'd ask my dad. I'd ask my dad a question. Like, I literally would ask my dad, what's the last thing you did? What's the last thing you saw with your eyes? Were you somewhere you were supposed to be or not? Do you regret seeing the last thing that you saw? Could you still recall what it was and where you were at when you saw this? Because it's something I always wondered. Because for me, uh, it was like, my oh, my dad went to the hospital. He had an accident on his bike. And the next morning, my dad was blind. So it was like everything in my childhood stops because it was no more playing catch, playing video games with my dad or camping because it was like wild in the nature. You need your eyes out there, you know? So all these things had to stop or be so modified. I was like in elementary school. So yeah, I want to go fishing, but I also don't know how to not get a hook in my hand. So now my blind dad is taking a hook out of my hand. Effective and good, but you know, mm-hmm. how stressful is that? Yeah. Everything went 180 for him. Yeah. So, yeah. I think I would ask both of my parents, like, if they had to be completely honest, like, what went wrong in their marriage? What was their part? What was their portion? Because, like I said, there was a lot of contempt in that situation once it ended. And therefore, it was a lot of them saying it was her, it was him. So I just wonder. That's a good question. A good question. (laughs) Mm. You would ask it too? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, if I got two questions. (laughs) <laughs> I guess <guess. laughs> I got two questions. <laughs> you know what? You can you can use my question for you. Got my question for <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, we talked about all this like family origin. We talked about our parents' relationship. We talked about how it affected other, our relationships and the kind of decisions we make and whatnot. Um, I just think it's really important that you know, especially for you guys out in podcast land, that you don't take from this conversation just reflection on your. Uh, childhood, but that you kind of take it as a jumping off point to be the healing in your family, whether that be to start a conversation, whether that be to kind of just like think about your next steps in your relationship, whether you're married and you're wondering, hey, what have I brought into this relationship that I don't want? What have I brought into this relationship that I do want to stay? And just being very intentional about those thoughts and intentional about those next steps. And so I just want to ask you guys too, um, especially to help the people out there who are listening, like, you know, once you reflected on these things, because I'm sure today was not the first time you reflected on these things. What was your first step in that healing process? And um, going from, man, all of these things happened to me when I was younger to I'm an adult. I feel like I have power. Like, what was your first steps to kind of start in that healing journey? One thing was going to therapy to acknowledge like the feelings that you have, um, whether it be good or bad about how your situation went. So therapy helped. And then also understanding like God gives us grace 
and for us to extend grace to each other. I know God's grace helped me to empathize with the situation, like going on with my father. It gave me empathy, even like for my mother, realizing that there were things that she probably wanted to do that she couldn't do because she stayed like so committed to her marriage that I don't know if she ever had an opportunity to have that conversation of um, what did you have to mourn by staying married? Like Mm. what opportunities did you give up by staying married with children? Yeah. You know, that's a lot. I mean, I think therapy is an amazing step and I'll pick back off by saying that that's how I kind of kicked this off as well. Like going to therapy, starting to learn how my family origin affected the way that I think and behave and handle conflict. I think a huge step though was having conversations. And I know that's not an easy thing to do, but I got to a place in my therapeutic journey where I was starting to be ready to have conversations. And I know one of the biggest conversations I had with, was with my brother first and then w- was able to end up moving on to my dad and just having conversations about things that, you know, those things that you know about, but you're like, we don't talk, we don't talk about Bruno, no, no. You know what I mean? Like those conversations, <laughs> but how healing, <laughs> how healing they can be. You know what I mean? I, I think I kind of did it the opposite uh the the opposite way I think I started going off to college and having conversations with at least with one of my parents and just really kind of improving that relationship and then um, as time has gone on I have sought therapy I think now I'm in the phase of kind of going a little bit deeper and mm. some of those kind of really figuring out how ha- that has impacted me and how it continues to impact me uh, I still do feel like I have some more conversations because I've had conversations with my parents but I think like you said, just having conversations with your siblings as well, because you also, each of you guys have taken different perspectives away from the situation. Um, So I think that's where I would like to go next with it is just to have those conversations with my siblings Um, and just to kind of continue to figure out, like undo the things that we learned and we saw. Come on, undo, period. Like we try to undo. (laughs) Yeah. Lord. We're trying to undo um, some of these chains, man. Some of these things that are holding us back. And you guys know, you know, she's a therapist herself, you know, toot toot, peep peep. Um, so, <laughs> Tasha, I just want you, right, real quick to address to people about what are those next steps when you don't have somebody to have a conversation with? Or if there was somebody that you would love to have a conversation with, but you don't even know them because they're not around. So what would you get, what would you say to those people from your therapeutic perspective? You know what I mean? (laughs) Um, I think journaling is great. I think starting off with journaling and writing letters to those loved ones that aren't around Mm and kind of putting down to paper what you would say, or even just having conversations with other people who might've known those individuals who could give you some more answers might be some great resources. A book that I love to recommend cautiously Um, is it didn't start with you. I don't remember the name of the author, but it talks about family trauma and family history. Um, Mm. And I think that's a great breakdown to let you, to help you better understand that, like the things that you experienced and the things that your parents did, it wasn't solely just because they were evil, but they had uh, their own story, their own history, their own upbringing that affected how they parented. So, and then seeking a therapist. <laughs> Come on, therapy for the win. <laughs> Going and talking to somebody who can help you unpack this in a, in a way that maybe you just don't even have the capability or just even giving you the space to just be completely transparent without judgment. Yeah. Listen, guys, on that note, how you feel? How do you feel? I could tell you, I feel a little affected by this conversation. And uh, I'm sure Dre and Tasha would echo that. Um, <laughs> I feel affected <laughs> by this conversation <laughs> on this topic. <laughs> but we want to know how you feel. Um, what did you learn as you listen to us about yourself? Uh, whether it be a kid of divorce or a kid whose parents are still together, we're still together, kid where you had one natural parent and one step parent in the home. Like, how did you uh, relate to those things? How did you take it? What impact did you did it leave on you? Um, right in. Let me know. I want to know. Um, let's know. have a conversation. And Dre wants to know, apparently. Uh, let's have a conversation about those things, guys. You know how to do it. 
go to the website, www. Why do I do this? Go to the website, unleash the niche.com to comment, or you can, of course, email, email, uh, or you can, of course, email in at laugh at unleash the niche. That's unleash T H A niche.com. That's laugh at unleash the niche. That's unleash T H A niche.com. Join the Patreon, guys. Niche gang gang. You know, all those things. And I think that's it. You know what I mean? Maybe we could change the world or something. I don't know. I'll leave you with that. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Wow. Hold on. Hey, people. What? Hey, people. Hey, uh. y'all. <laughs> it's the same level of energy. I no, it was, I was not. Hey, people. It was I said, hey, not. People. Yes. So we got to do our things again?